I'm Dr. Pamela Ruig, Extension Milk Quality Veterinarian for the University of Wisconsin and today I'm continuing with our Managing Mastitis Pathogen Series. This week we're working on Part 6 and we'll be discussing mastitis caused by coagulase negative staphylococci. Now coagulase negative staphylococci have a variety of names. They're usually referred to as CNS for their initials on the coagulase negative staphylococci, but sometimes in some regions they're called environmental staph or skin staphs or some other name that just refers to staphylococci in general. This group of coagulase negative staphylococci or CNS refers to a group of greater than 50 bacteria, all of which are under the genus staphylococci. Approximately 10 of those 50 different bacteria have been isolated from intramammary infections in dairy cows. So normally when we're talking about CNS, we're referring to about 10 different species of staphylococci. Uh, the CNS are normally considered to be a minor mastitis pathogens and they're commonly found on teat skin, nasal tissue, and if you'd culture your own hands, it's very likely you'd find them there as well. So these coagulase negative staphylococci are typically found on teat skin. They're considered opportunistic. They may be found in the street canal as well of animals. And thus, it's not surprising that they're the most common bacteria that are recovered from milk samples obtained from post-calving heifers. In fact, when we go out to farms and we take milk samples from heifers in the immediate first one, two, or three days post-calving, it's not unusual to recover these CNS from about 40 to 50 percent of the heifers in that early postpartum period. Now these um, CNS are associated with the teat skin, they're also found in the street canal, and they do cause some cases of clinical mastitis in lactating dairy cattle, but it's not a large percentage of cases. So typically if we look at the incidence of recovery of CNS from milk samples of cows that have visibly abnormal milk, they're only found in about 5 to 10 percent of the cases of clinical mastitis. They are more commonly associated with milk samples that are obtained from cows that have subclinical mastitis. So when we go out and we identify these cows that have somatic cell counts greater than 200,000 cells per mil and we take milk samples from them, it's not unusual to recover the, um, these CNS from about 15 to 20 percent of these cases of subclinical mastitis. Just like other mastitis pathogens, we can't diagnose that an infection is caused by coagulase negative staphylococci just by looking at the symptoms in the cow. We have to take a milk sample, take it to our laboratory, and do some diagnostic testing to arrive at a diagnosis of if it's coagulase negative staphylococci or another type of bacteria. Now when we take these milk samples to the laboratory, CNS are relatively easy to grow. They're gram-positive um, organisms. They grow on the typical medias used in standard microbiological laboratories, and they grow on um, medias that are usually used in on-farm culture laboratories. After um, the media is inoculated and incubated, we will often look at our microbiological plates to try to make a diagnosis, but it's important to recognize that um, CNS could be confused with some uh, diagnoses of Staph aureus unless additional microbiological tests are done. So the way this is normally done is pretty simple. Most coagulase negative staphylococci um, are coagulase negative, and most Staph aureus are coagulase positive. So that's the, the, the basis both of the name of this group of organisms and the primary diagnostic test. However, there's one caution. A few species of this group of what we call coagulase negative staphylococci are actually coagulase positive. In bovine mastitis, those species, the most common species that are coagulase positive are Staphylococcus hyacus and Staphylococcus intermedius. Now, the take home message on this is, if you have a diagnosis of Staph aureus, um, but you're suspicious that that diagnosis isn't correct, because maybe the history and the presentation of the case don't fit, or maybe the organism doesn't look just right on that laboratory plate, have more laboratory testing done. 
um, send your uh, isolates to a certified laboratory, a laboratory that is specialized on mastitis diagnosis, and ask them to do mannitol testing or molecular sequencing because sometimes uh, these diagnoses can be confused for a few of these species. Most of the time when we're arriving at a diagnosis of coagulase negative staphylococci, it's enough just to know that they're CNS and that they're not Staph aureus. But occasionally, usually for research purposes, we may desire to know the specific species. Like in this instance, Staphylococcus is the genus and Hyacus is the species or Intermedius is the species. And there's one caution that I have with that. Most of the laboratory methods that are used to identify species of CNS that are obtained from cases of bovine mastitis, most of the standard laboratory methods are not very accurate at the species level. So in this instance, if you would ever need to, to get to that level of diagnosis, those samples should be subjected to molecular methods that, uh, like sequencing or other methods that are used at a higher level of a laboratory diagnosis. Now when coagulase negative staphylococci do cause mastitis infections, there's relatively good news because this is a minor pathogen and most of the time the presentation of these symptoms will be relatively mild. When we have subclinical infections that are associated with CNS, the somatic cell count usually doesn't exceed about 500,000 cells per mil and eventually many of these cases often self-cure. Now there are occasional CNS species that may result in persistent infections and you can recognize these because the cell count will stay high for months on end. CNS also cause only a small proportion of clinical cases of mastitis and almost all of those cases present with mild symptoms. In a recent set of data that we collected, of infections, of clinical cases caused by CNS, 65% of the time the only symptom was mildly abnormal milk, about 33% of the time the most severe symptom was um, a slightly swollen quarter, and only a very small percentage, less than about 2% of the cases would result in a visibly ill animal. So CNS are considered to be commensal organisms that live on teat skin and in the street canal of, uh, of the teat. And uh, it's not uh, unexpected, therefore, that we often find them in the pre-calving udder secretion of heifers. So therefore, when we think about the reservoir and the transmission, we've got to recognize that these are opportunistic pathogens that establish infections when teat disinfection either isn't used or it isn't effective. And the good news here in this instance is that uh, most of these CNS are not considered to be highly contagious. They just establish these infections because they're there and the infective dose is allowed to become large enough to result in a mastitis infection. Now remember when we're talking about CNS, we're talking about a pathogen that's considered to be a, of a minor pathogen, not a major pathogen. And we have to keep that in mind when we think about our treatment recommendations. It's rarely advised to treat cows that are infected with CNS during lactation when they have subclinical infections. And the reason we rarely recommend treatment of these CNS infections is they typically have a high rate of spontaneous cure. There's very little data that shows that these minor uh, mastitis pathogens have an impact on milk yield. They are rarely associated with clinical symptoms that require us to discard milk and because of these issues the cost of the treatment and the discarded milk will usually exceed the benefits of treating the cow during the lactation period. However, there are some instances where we've got clinical cases and those clinical cases caused by CNS um, should be treated. Uh, when we're going to treat these clinical cases, we would normally recommend a short duration treatment, meaning a treatment um, for uh, one or two days. The reason that we can be effective with our short duration treatments is that most of these CNS, after they infect uh, the udder, their location of the infection within the udder is on the mucosal surfaces of the ducts.
and therefore there's no need for extended duration therapy because these pathogens don't invade deeply into the secretory tissue and these short duration therapies therefore can be quite effective. Another group of animals that people sometimes wonder about treating when they have CNS infections is these postpartum heifers where they've taken milk samples in the immediate po uh, postpartum period and have recovered CNS from these animals. Um, on most farms, most of the time, it's rarely recommended to treat these CNS infections because research has demonstrated that at least 50 to 70 percent of these infections will be spontaneously cured by about day 7 to 10 post-calving. So um, if you're th considering treatment of postpartum heifers that have apparent CNS infections, you'd probably want to consult with your veterinarian, look at the history of the cow, and look at the way these um, these infections behave because in most instances treatment won't be necessary. So coming back to our key point, CNS are opportunistic pathogens that have their primary reservoir on the teat skin. Therefore the control of them is fairly obvious. Effective pre and post milking teat dipping is the most important strategy we can do to control the exposure to these organisms and thus control apparent infections. So focus on effective teat dipping, focus on effective pre-milking teat disinfection. Another very important strategy is the use of dry cow therapy on all quarters of all cows at the end of every lactation. Some of these CNS will establish mild subclinical infections and most of these mild subclinical infections will respond well to dry cow therapy at the end of the lactation. Well, let's just summarize what we know about these mastitis infections associated with coagulase negative staphylococci. CNS refer to a group of staphylococci that are differentiated from Staph aureus based on specific laboratory tests. They're considered to be minor pathogens that cause opportunistic infections of the udder. They rarely cause high somatic cell counts and they very rarely cause severe clinical mastitis. When they do cause infections of the udder, they're often self-limiting or in the instances where we have clinical disease, they may require only short duration treatments. And when we look at overall at controlling them, we're based on reducing colonization of teat skin, so pre and post milking teat dipping and the use of dry cow therapies are our most important strategies.